What up my freaks, Ruana Sensei here with part 12 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Malekith and Nagarond Inc. campaign. Nagarond Inc. is excited to announce our unlimited time collaboration event with the Temple of Cain. All employees will get a free trial of our limited edition torture rack. Some restrictions may apply. So anyway, as we saw last time, Crow and Hellebron had her battle for the Death Sword and the Curse to Blade, which was a very fun quest battle that I enjoyed immensely, and now I'm expecting great things from Malekith's own sword, the Destroyer, when we get to that. In addition, Malekith brought fire and fury to the Witchwood, burning the place down and sacking it for a massive amount of cash, which I'm very grateful for, as it'll help kick our economy into gear. Otherwise, this episode, the main thing thing. Well, I don't see any of the Wood Elves nearby, so it's probably going to be to try to catch Silostra, as well as to try to catch Hordred, which hopefully will succeed, and then move out towards Chaos finally with Hellebron, especially now that we have the uh, the additional troops there. Alright, to begin, or actually before we begin, 300, 30, 300 likes, 30 comments, same offer applies, so drop them if you're uh, interested in keeping this thing uploading reasonably fast, and we reached it last time, so for now now it continues. Uh, let's see. We are going to not move anybody, are we? Because everybody's already moved. So that means building, building. All right, it begins. It begins. Road of Skulls. We shall start with the... Oh, you know what? Let's start with the uh, Black Arcs, in fact. There's a bunch of stuff that we want to get. You know what? Let's move you close enough so that you can uh, provide Black Arc support to all of this. I don't think it's needed against Harry the Hammer, but who knows. Uh, let's just keep you out there. Uh, then we're going to build you the slave hold because it gives us 10 slaves per turn which is still worth our time and then the other black arc yeah let's get the raider lodges it'll pay for itself not so much by the income but but the upkeep reduction which we can make further use of as we get additional units in that army all right now that the black arcs are done i was about to say buildings but you know what we probably want a, a death hag Ambush Master's gonna be Ambush Master. We can put that into Crone Hellebron's army. Alright, that was reasonably easy. Now, what do we do now? First of all, Malekith, Crone Hellebron, you guys are all good. Why did I double check you? I don't know. A Road of Skulls, Harganath, okie dokie. So, you no longer need enforced tribute payments, although, wait. This is upkeep of everybody in the province, so actually while these guys move through it, maybe we want to keep it here. Hmm. All right, fine. We'll keep it here for now. Uh, Harganeth, you are going to build yourself a sorceress's abode because we need as many sorceresses as we can get. And then let's do... Oh, we want both the slave district and the... Bla oh, wait. Actually, we want slave pens. You know what? In this place, we'll go slave pens and we'll go black roads in combination. I guess. The income from slaves increase isn't anything crazy, mind you, but at least it'll make diktats very, very cheap, so if nothing else, that'll be uh, that'll be worth our time and hopefully our money. And what else did we need to build here? Oh, we could upgrade the, the states of the masters. Ah, yeah, sure, why don't you grow the place faster? You know what, we do want to try to get it to tier 5 as fast as possible. What if we actually don't build the slave pens right now, but instead go for maximizing growth? You know what, let's do that first, because Harganath's uh, special buildings are tier 5, so once that's done, we delete the growth buildings and replace them with money buildings. You, however, are going to build the slave slums to get that control to adjacent provinces. Good. Iron Foothills, Harkaldry, you can do the same thing, slave slums, adjacent control, and I guess we're not going to pop the... Uh, and the diktat there right now. Broken lands, you no longer need sacrifices to Cain. You are instead going to switch to, let's say, read Dark Portents for increased campaign movement range for armies, uh, just in case these guys need to move around and deal with uh, uh, deal with Silostra. Slaver's Point, we're going to upgrade you. Yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to upgrade you and we're going to build the defenses here because we can't just keep uh, running around after... Uh, uh, after Silostra, then I guess we're going to go fights to the... No, we're going to go slave drive here. Yeah, we have negative public order, but... Mm, 14 turns, eh? 
Do we go for this? It'll allow us to increase the growth further. I'm just wondering whether it's worth our time right now. Or do we just wait to upgrade Hag Grief to Tier 4? We do want to get the Dark Crag as fast as possible, though. And that's the thing. It's a lot of uh, extra money and resources. You know what, I, su I suppose Slave Drag will give us growth and construction costs, which will put it down to 11 turns. Alright, yeah, that's fine. Let's do that. We're not going to upgrade you then. Alrighty, Iron Frost Glacier. Let's build some growth. I guess we're trying to grow everywhere then. And Eldar Spire will go for the Dark Tower. You already have the Diktat up and running. And Man Highborn Hostages. Fantastic. Crafting District. And here we will go for... That's a good question. Do we go for the Slave Sums? This place is not going to be bordering a lot of stuff that will actually make good use of it. In which case, I'm not sure that it's needed. I'm almost thinking that maybe we want to build military structures here, specifically capacity military structures, so Halls of Ravaging and maybe Temples of Cain for additional Death Hags. Yeah, just build those two. Here, 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 here. I'll think about it. We'll leave this uh, space open for now. Uh, Glacial Gardens. You can have a slave slum because you can transfer the public order and you're only a two-territory province. We'll upgrade the Black Light Tower and get that artis artisan's district up and running. Obsidian Peaks will get you that timber mill as well as... Mmm... Do we need defenses here at Clarkara? No, nah, probably not. So let's go for Artisan's House. It's too far away from anybody to reach, and we don't particularly care about the Witchwood. All right. Well, that looks like that's most of the stuff that we need. We can hold on to the rest of our cash for now. And while we could also... Hmm. We could recruit more units on the Black Ark. They are relatively cheap in terms of how... Uh, 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 for how... Wow, 73. Damn, that's nice. I'm just looking at their melee attack. Hey, you know what? Let's keep building Black Ark Corsairs. We do have the money right now. Hopefully I'm not going overboard with this, but, you know, I still feel like it's, uh, it's quite necessary. I'd really love for this Black Ark to actually be able to... Uh, uh, to actually, you know, function by itself rather than essentially have to sit around. I'm also wondering whether we should get the charge bonus for these guys. It's actually quite low for the Black Heart Corsairs, and most of them will want to actually move into melee, so maybe First Strike isn't the worst thing in the world. What do you have again? You have Spiteful, so it's weapon strength for everybody. Which ain't too bad either. Their weapon strength is pretty solid. Hmm. You know, I'll think about it. It's not super necessary right now. We could also get the Fighting Pits or Torture Posts. It's only one, uh, one growth, and we are at what? We're at four, growing to five. It'll cost us an extra, what, two turns to get money as well as recruit ranks? And XP? Yeah, fine. Just do it. And there we go. Now we're good. Let's double-check Diplomacy before we end the turn, and hopefully fight Silostra. Yes to the Cult of Pleasure non-aggression pact. We'll probably have to confederate them soon, huh? Archaon wants to trade, eh? He's fighting the Legion of Chaos, but Malice does hate him. Although it might be interesting to... Hmm... I'm wondering whether it would be beneficial to fight Mal or to fight Archaon at all. The thing is... The Dark Elves hate Chaos. They really do. Well, there's a few that don't, but the, generally speaking, the Dark Elves hate Chaos. So I think we're going to skip this. Uh, outpost. Oh, we could build the Outpost. Now, it's still not needed because we checked last episode and we still can't build any of the good stuff. But anyway, the important thing is uh, we gotta find ourselves a... Uh, uh, we gotta find ourselves killing Silostra off, finally. So, join war against now. We just peaced out with them, they'd be all pissy about it, and ah, <laughs> the Ambush succeeded. Poor, poor Hordred, and I guess Harry, but uh, I ought to resolve this. I would have actually, oh wow, look at the poor Witch Elves. Uh, I would have actually preferred to have done this battle with uh, Hellebron to get her the XP, but you can't have everything. Ah, Kazrak is in our territory, eh? That's gonna be annoying. All right, ally mobilizes settlement, and Glamour Weaver told Tyrion is out there. Ally mission successful, enemy killed in battle, enemy killed in battle. Weapon strength, you don't need that. And a degenerate, <laughs> a degenerate kettle drummer. Evil choir master and degenerate kettle drummer. Isn't that just fantastic? Uh, well, he gets also healed up nicely, so we don't care about uh, anything there. Now, Hellebron, you can proceed to, I guess... 
I guess it's through Harganetha, the fastest route, so that's where we're going. Sigalis, you stay out here as we will be building up that Temple of Cain fairly shortly, in fact, especially because the Dark Citadel is nearly ready for construction. Uh, we're going to transfer Recruiter Rivaris's troops to Helebron. And I guess Aurora is going to join this army as well, so we'll need to make space, essentially. Uh, so you all here... You all out, and one more out, I guess, is going to have to be one of the Dark Shards. Yeah, I want to get rid of one of the Masters, but it doesn't necessarily have to be right now, especially while we still lack the Harganeth Executioners in sufficient numbers. Replenish troops, please. And Recruiter Rivares, I guess, just stay there. You're probably going to transfer the troops to this Black Ark. Alrighty, Helebron, looking good. Starting to get to proper army. I'd love to build you some artillery. We won't be able to get it easily here with Admiral Valal. I maybe should have built some here as well. What the heck is Silostra doing now? Hmm. What do we do with you, Silostra? We could send Jaden to Black Creek Spire, but then we wouldn't have an... Oh, you know what we could do? We could put the ambusher right here. Alright, let's give this a try. We're gonna go right here. While Jaden moves to Black Creek Spire. Like, well, I guess in March stance, I guess regular stance won't reach it, unfortunately. Alright, fine. Black Creek, Spire, you go. Hopefully this place could do it. Well, it has a Black Guard, it has some shades, it has some decent stuff. And with Jaden, it'll at least have some sorcery. And now we can go back. Speaking of sorcery, we can buff that up. We have Flock of Doom with you. And this is wild form. The extra armor would be very solid if we have enough mana to cast it, which Jaden most certainly does. There's also Pan's Impenetrable Pelt, but the level 1, I believe, does not have area effect, so it's gonna be not so useful. Alright, this is wild form for you then. Alrighty, we'll see where Silostra goes. Oh, she's, uh, she's really quite annoying. Alright. In the meantime, Malekith. Oh, wow, we're back up at uh, 24k. Malekith, I guess you're going to Hag Hall. Uh, let's say... Oh, we can't reach it, can we? All right, go here. And... Whoa, there's an enemy army here. Hello. Tree Singer Morlana. Ah, not a big army or anything like that. I was going to raid, but you know what? Maybe we can bait them into attacking the Witchwood. Uh, go into Ambush Dance right here. 60%, eh? Okay, what about this? And we can guarantee this is probably the only army this faction has left, so we should probably uh, make good use of it. Uh, Silostra, yes, we, we will definitely try to kill you. Maybe I should have actually selected uh, Tree Singer Morlana there. Then, uh, we do have the option of getting the Raven Heralds on the field now, and I love the unit to death, so I do want them on the field. Uh, let's take out... I guess... Did we get rid of a Dark Shard unit? We do have the Dark Riders with repeater crossbows. Hmm. Malika's army will probably not be relying on crazy mats of range anyway. I'm just wondering what it's even beneficial to remove here, or from here, I guess. I hesitate to get rid of Dark Shards, generally speaking, especially the shielded ones, uh, but you know what? I think we're going to get rid of one of the shielded ones. Alright, and then Raven Heralds. Unlike so. Although, funnily enough, the Shielded Ones would probably be pretty good against the Wood Elves. But then again, their range is only 140, which means the Wood Elves would, generally speaking, outrange them by quite a bit. Uh, you can have Raven Heralds there, Malekith. Then, what my idea was is to do this. Uh, research rate, ambush success chance, and constant casualty or punishment rate out of the offering of Anathorema. Anathorema is the goddess of vengeance, and uh, quite uh, worshipped by the Wood Elves, so yes, as uh, sacrifice. Hmm. I've always found it a little bit surprising that the uh, and Dark Elves prefer, it seems, Aerith Kiel to Anathorema, who, you know, the goddess of vengeance feels like it would, you know, resonate with the Dark Elves a little bit more. Um, but anyway, let's do this. Sacrifice. And we'll hopefully try to make use of that extra ambush to... What are we at here now? 85% looks pretty good. And then I guess we we don't want to get too close. The problem of being too close is the fact that the enemy will then uh, be more liable to spot us. Hopefully Varsio here stays here instead of tries trying to uncover Malakath. You know what? Stay away from Varsio. <laughs> 
Kind of in an annoying position. Let's also level up just in case we fight. Uh, we have Arcane Conduit, Flamestorm, Piercing Bolts. And Burning Head is really solid against the uh, Wood Elves because of the relatively fragile nature of their archers. Let's do that. Uh, then we have Kuran, who's got a, a lot of points available to him. Uh, he is... Center of the Cold-Blooded, Weapon Strength for... Okay, yeah, we don't need that. At least not right now. We could keep building up him to be a fighter. Building him up, rather, to build a fighter. Or we could go above suspicion and start buffing up Malekith. And I think that's what we're going to do. And I guess you're going to be the same Foros Blood Scourge. So I'm not 100% sure we're going to keep you in this army, but, you know, for now. Uh, you have no foe seeker, so let's get you that, but then we'll go for above suspicion. Malekith now hits for 601, and that's without his sword. In fact, wait, just to double check. Oh, right, the Boots of Brachus. Uh, we should give that to Crone Helebron. Ooh, we also have the Scroll of Black Horror. Or the Forbidden Rod. Damn, that's a hard choice. Both are quite useful. Hmm. Ring of Hotek, Miscast, Chance. This would also be fairly decent on you, wouldn't it? Alright, fine. We're gonna give you the Ring of Kotek, and we're gonna give you the Scroll of Black Horror, I think. Although, extra magic out of the Forbidden Rod. Honestly, I don't think it'll matter all that much for this particular battle. If we actually even get a battle. So, either way, we'll probably be fine. Also, are you able to get any of these guys? Just High Elf Slaves? No. Nothing useful. Uh... Very little amount of damage, eh? You know what, I think we'll get more out of the Forbidden Rod because we'll be able to cast more spells. And then you guys probably don't need anything, right? Well, if you do, I'm too lazy to check now, so let's just, uh, uh let's just continue doing what we were doing. Helebron and Boots of Brachus. Nice. And the extra missile resistance will put her up to 27 plus the 14 out of the missile and the ward save. Pretty darn good, I would say. And that is it. I was really expecting to fight uh, Silastra this turn, damn it. And now I'm lost. I'm just lost. Uh, what can we do here? Warhost the Apocalypse really wants to trade. Not like It's not like Hagrief will kill us for trading with him. It's free money. You know what? Free money is free money. Just trade with them. We could, build, we could always betray them later. It's not like it matters all that much. All right, there you go. And I guess it's back to building buildings. What do we have here? Harganeth, let's start with upgrading you. I was already talking about that earlier, and let's keep growing you with those growth buildings. We're going to hold on to the slaves for now. I'd rather not... Uh, uh, I'd rather not screw us over by the fact that uh, the uh, slave count is dropping very quickly right now. Uh, guild halls for you, the chill road. It may be called the chill road, but I sincerely doubt that it's very chill. Probably has... Uh, a lot of impaled people on it. Uh, okay, Iron Coast. Eldar Spire, we are holding off on building anything here because I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with you yet, whether it's military or not. Crafting District is the same. I don't want to screw up the public order of these places either. Although you're kind of okay, whereas Iron Coast is... Hmm, might. Yeah, you know what? We have to remember that this is all with sacrifice to authority, which is why I'm so concerned about building uh, uh, public order buildings. Military buildings will still provide us small amounts of money, but they're not super critical right now, so we'll wait on them. And let's get a crafting district for you for the monoliths, and a crafting district for you as well. Shrine of Ladriel. Mm, probably wait for now until I figure out whether you're going to be economical or whether you're going to be military. Circle of Destruction will build you up as well as all of this. And I probably should have double-checked whether there were any more diktats to pop anywhere, but too late now. Doomglades, Temple of Adioth, let's upgrade you. We will definitely be keeping you, which would... Ah, just repair it, just repair it. Maybe that'll allow us to... Uh... Uh, it'll allow us to... I'm just wondering whether we should get Demand Highborn Hostages instead. Campaign movement trench for enemy army starting this province. Maybe we attack Kazrak if he's still here, or if he moves near us. There's certainly potential for that. This, however, gives us... Oh, this gives us Amber success chance. No, you know what? That's fine, then. I'm building upgrade available in... Oh, Admiral, yours. 2,000 gold for some fighting pits? I don't think so. I don't think so. You're still sitting there, eh? Well... You know what, Admiral Yor, you can keep recruiting. Uh, get yourself two more Black Arc Corsairs and one more regular Black Arc Corsair. Two Canvos, one regular. We'll probably go a little bit heavier on the uh, on the others. Uh, we probably also want to get a couple more Bolt Throwers just for 
transferring to Crone Hellebron. Although, ooh, that, uh, that took all of our cash. All right, gotta be careful. If I go overboard, we'll run out of money. <laughs> oh, all right, all right, and turn, and turn. Now Sai lost her. Please attack, please, please. Just, just, just do it. Where the heck did she go? Where did she go? Damn it. <laughs> so I lost her. Why? Uh, peace treaty with the decadent host. No. What are you talking about? That's not happening. Tree singer more... Lo Where the heck did you come from? Huh. You're gonna attack the witchwood. Okay, but if you capture it, we'll just kill you. Okay, go for it. Wait, did she somehow bypass... The heck? The heck? Huh. They're attacking Malekith. Well, that's interesting. Uh, well, the ambush clearly got foiled. Now I have to wonder. Huh. All right, I'm going to retreat here. This is a lot of range enemies, and frankly, yeah, it's too many range enemies. If we retreat, will they be able to attack us again? Is my question. Because if not, we might be able to destroy them piecemeal. Uh, retreat. Well, just in case, I'm gonna pop you on you. Retreat. See what happens. Yes, okay, they failed, which means we can now pick our battle. Alright, so what do we have here? First of all, now, where's Silostra? You're all the way out here, and we can't even reach you with the Black Arco. You gotta be kidding me. Alright, alright, then we're going to move you back down here. I feel like I wasted that ambush chance thing. Uh, you're gonna move back down here. Malekith, ambush foil. The oh, I get that. Ready for duty, Ava Lord, not important. Jaden, just stick around here until we figure out what to do with Silostra. We'll probably just continue building up Admiral Yor's army and then just send him after her, because otherwise it's uh, it's gonna take forever. Malekith, what are we looking at here? So he's right there. He retreated this way, so he didn't heal up. He can Druki first strike onto the Sisters of Twilight main force, and they do have that army nearby, eh? Do we still have the Toy with Prey active? Yes, we do, so we can still make good use of it. All right, I guess that's what we're doing then. Uh, let's apply another point to you. More knightly prestige for Malekith. And what are we facing off against here? Once again, lots of ranged units and even more out of the reinforcing army. But yeah, if we could destroy this one before the second one arrives, that'd be great. A Druki for a strike for you, Malekith. And head out. Valiant defeat, and not surprising, I suppose. Uh, the sisters... Oh, damn, they're level 16. Mm, damn, that's uh, pretty high. They're actually higher level than Malekith, and they have their uh, forest dragon as well. They have lots of good stuff, generally speaking. How much mana? 84, about equivalent with us. And in Hawk Riders are, generally speaking, okay units. Under the Sisters of Twilight, they're great units. In SFO, they're already pretty crazy good, but under the Sisters of Twilight and SFO, they're pretty bonkers, so we uh, definitely have to watch out for these guys. They're great in melee, they're great in range, they're great at pretty much everything. And they probably have a lot of resistances as well. All right, well, good for them. Uh, Malekith, you got your work cut out for you, bud? Attack. I am their doom. All righty, Malekith, you uh, you edge on, my friend, and we love you so for it. I'm also uh, I'm also really starting to love it when they yell Druki right at the start of the uh, uh, battle. And, oh wow, the uh, sun glinting uh, makes everything so bright here. Malekith is fully visible, even if it looks odd not to have him in shadow. But uh, not such a bad thing, I think. It's gonna be a pretty fun battle. I'm not actually sure we can pull this off, but uh, well, we'll obviously give it our best try. I think at the end of the day, even if we route, we're close to the edge of the map here. And we should be able to survive one battle. And then or either retreat or fight them again if we take a lot of heavy damage. But yeah, this is going to be very dicey. They have massive range superiority, though the one benefit that we have here is they sort of worked themselves into a corner of the map. Meaning, if we can surround them, and this is why we deployed a decent amount of our forces here, well, we can probably force them to, uh, uh, to be backed into a corner. This 
is kind of the AI's fault and we have to advance towards them anyway, ideally before the second army gets here. So, we're going to do so. Anyway, I digress. The battle begins. Malekith and his command squad or his uh, war party charge forward. And they're going to try to catch the enemy range units as fast as they can. Man, the snow looks really, really blight, bright rather in this particular light. I'm almost tempted to turn off the uh, uh, to turn off fake HDR for this particular battle. Hmm. Man, actually, out of curiosity, wait, let me see if I can. There we go. Just for this battle, I think it still looks uh, it still looks fairly decent with the uh, brightness, but uh, the uh, snow is looking really, really bright with HDR. Alrighty, uh, let's continue. At least this way we can sort of see the stuff. It really does feel like it depends on the battle. Anyway, the Masters have arrived and Malakip has arrived as well, and the goal is pretty clear. They're going to distract the enemies. Unfortunately for us, uh, while it would have been ideal to take out the Sisters of Twilight, uh, they're hovering overhead and it doesn't look like they're planning to drop down, in which case we need to take out most of the rest of the enemy army, though we can, I don't know, try to force them to land? I guess we're gonna have to see. Anyway, the battle is joined our front lines have engaged the enemy all over. It looks like the eagles are being helped by the uh, uh, the enemy eternal guard and the dryads fighting against our dread spears here. Our range units are duking it out in the background and we're trying to uh, cast enough spells to damage the enemy range in addition to uh, hit them, or hitting rather them with our own range. Otherwise it looks like on the sides we are using two units of dark riders and the raven heralds and uh, the cold one chariots all to focus a single unit of hawk riders and they're still taking absolute ages to uh, to be destroyed either we're uh, uh, either we're not dishing out enough damage or they have enough resistances to overcome it i do love the raven heralds models though and i really wish that you could build these units as a special tier three or like as a, a high tier unit separately it's really too bad that you could only build one and but oh well Maybe they'd be too strong if you could build multiples of them. Keep firing on those Hawk Riders. They're probably the biggest threats on the field other than uh, uh, Malak... Or well, not Malak, other than the... Well, yes, Malak, but uh, other than the Sisters of Twilight. Otherwise, the front lines are looking about even. We can see our Dread Spears are done here, and so are the enemy Eternal Guard. Uh, the Dread Spears here are winning against the Dryads, but I think that was mostly due to spell work. Uh, the Eagles and the Eternal Guard have also broken through the other unit of uh, spears as well and they're trading bleeds as the dread spears uh, are getting hit by the bleed from the great forest eagles which are still pretty darn okay all right well uh, this is going to allow the enemy to charge forward and into our lines of uh, uh, of dark shards though hopefully the enemy will remain distracted long enough for us to get at least a few shots onto the eternal guard the sisters of twilight still hovering in the air and the melee lines still remains engaged but the reinforcements are here and the balance of power is very much in the enemy's favor this this is, uh, this is starting to look bad, and it's starting to look very dangerous for us, especially for the forces that are uh, collapsing. Once our entire melee line collapses, the enemy Glade Riders will simply overrun us. We have managed to very heavily damage one of those units of uh, Hawk Riders, but the enemy was fairly smart and actually moved them away to where they can't be focused by our Dark Riders and uh, Raven Heralds anymore, so we're going to have to switch to the other one. And that said, the problem with that is that uh, the enemy has brought those Glade Guard or Glade Guard and I want to say Glade Riders and various units basically to help them out here. We still have magics however and at the very least we are winning in terms of our uh, magical damage. Here comes a piercing bolt of burning to well burn down the enemies. And here comes another spell right in the middle of these Glade Riders, which we can't really uh, deal with. We're going to pop an overcast version of the uh, of Frostbite first, because it will slow the enemy down via Frostbite. Uh, Chillwind, rather. Which applies Frostbite when it's overcast. Then a... Uh, 
flame storm right in the middle of this formation just to try to kill off as many as possible. In the meantime, Malekith and the Masters have actually found the uh, Tree Singer, the second lord of the reinforcing army, and have stopped them in their tracks with that Tormentor Sword so they can't get away. And damn, those stags are huge. What the heck is this? Stags are bigger than cold ones, and cold ones are uh, are bigger than horses, so damn. Alrighty, well, fortunately, a big or not, uh, they fall pretty hard, and it looks like the Masters and Malekith have uh, taken care of them, and now we'll have to separate once again to continue engaging all those range units and preventing them from killing us. Balance of power still remains in the enemy's favor, and we can see a lot of our units have routed, though decent amounts of the enemy units have routed as well, and those Sisters of Twilight still sitting up there, uh, dishing out damage, and br pretty much untouchable. We can't afford to focus the massive HP pool of the Sisters of Twilight in combination with their resistances when we have uh, so many range units still on the field. The Glade Riders in particular are proving very difficult to pin down and are just running around, uh, riding I should say around as they please. Uh, just trying to get our uh, unit of chariots in there to help a dragon breath, noxious breath, whatever, coming down into our dread spears as well. And it looks like the Black Guard of Nagaron have been committed as well. They're still pretty okay, sitting at above half HP, though only slightly above, and are going to be hopefully helpful in taking out those damn Glade Riders. The balance of power still in the enemy's favor. We still have the murderous prowess, or we have the permanent aspect of the murderous prowess active now and it looks like one of our masters got trapped and we're gonna quickly pop a blade wind off on the dryads and the uh, and the eternal guard there still not enough to change that uh, a balance of power though damn what a battle, though. This is uh, this is extremely fun. Generally speaking, I hate fighting the Wood Elves, and uh, in most campaigns, whenever I feel like they're going to be our enemy, I try to just burn them down as fast as possible so that we don't have to deal with them. But, uh, well, you know, they, they do provide some fun fights occasionally when you're not just having your slow infantry chase around faster uh, away stalkers or way watchers all the damn time. Anyway, balance of power is still in their favor, and I think it's most of, uh, well, a, a decent amount of their units have gotten off their field, and so has a decent amount of our units. Essentially, we're both just maintaining enough HP to uh, be balanced with each other, so pretty great battle, and hard to say whose favor it's going to go into. They still have these damn hawk rides which I really wish we could have been able to uh, get off the field, uh, but it wasn't possible. Uh, the Black Guard fighting together with Malekith, and now it's just a matter of trying to once again keep all the enemy range units engaged as best we can, and perhaps more importantly, any unit that routes we really need to be chasing off so that uh, the enemy can't uh, uh, can't rally. There's a couple more Glade Riders here, and as I said, we have to focus on the uh, infantry, missile infantry first, because we can actually chase them down, unlike the Glade Riders. And we still can't do anything about those damn Sisters of Twilight firing with complete impunity and probably doing a ton of damage to us. It looks like another unit of Dark Shards is about to rout. Glade Riders are riding around trying to escape our uh, Dread Spears, which are chasing them all over the place, though a few Dark Shards are still shooting those Glade Riders. Though it looks like these guys will rout soon as well. Try to get a few more shots into them. This, uh, this battle definitely looks better without the HDR, because I can actually see what the heck is going on. But it really depends on the battle. Although I really don't want to adjust ever with every single battle. That's also kind of a hassle. Hey, finally the Hawk Riders have moved in close enough to our units here, though, uh, yeah, we took some damage. The Dark Riders, one of the Dark Riders, I think, ran off the field, and that Raven Heralds did as well. We can see how few of our units and how few of the enemy units both are still on the field, but it looks like that was just, just enough. One more noxious breath coming in from the uh, Sisters of Twilight's dragon, and ooh, it catches a chariot as well as some black guard. It was a nice shot, but a parting shot, as the last of the enemies are going to shatter, and the battle will finally be ours. Damn. 
That was uh, that was very, very close. Malchus still has uh, half HP, but uh, gotta give that up to the uh, satchel of potions that he has for healing him up repeatedly, as he could, he could do it three times because of it being a satchel, and the magic that he was able to provide uh, via the power of darkness. Uh, Kuran, unfortunately, got pretty badly beat up, although Foros is still okay. He... Uh, uh, he had the hunger, or he has the hunger, so I guess he was able to maintain enough HP and not to be too hurt. Kind of now thinking that maybe the hunger is actually the uh, better of the uh, uh, better of the received skills. But hopefully we could just give some sort of regeneration to Kuran. He is a legend after all, and I still feel like he uh, should be given it anyway. Uh, there we go. Most definitely a Pyrrhic victory. But here's the problem: the enemy is not destroyed. Most of their armies ran off the field, and we're going. Going to have to deal with them again. Will we have enough units, or will they have enough units, I guess is the question. We weren't able to kill the Sisters of Twilight or their mage, so they'll be back, although one of their lords is dead. Well, let's see. Let's see what we still got. Ooh, a Pyrrhic victory. That was, uh, I gotta say, that was uncomfortably close on the one hand. On the other hand, what a battle. Damn, that was fun. I was very impressed with the Glade Riders. They were definitely very difficult to pin down and uh, damage. In fact, uh, against Spellcasters, the Glade Riders seem to be the far better choice uh, than the likes of the Graveyard and possibly even the Deepwood Scouts. While the uh, latter do decent damage, it looks like the uh, Glade Riders completely outdamage them. And by a fairly large margin. So good job to them. Uh, we certainly took damage ourselves. Malekith got 31k and the Sorceress of Fire also got 30k and it's making a good case for keeping a Sorceress of Fire in this army. That said, I don't know whether the AI... Well, actually, it probably did the smart thing by having the uh, Sisters of Twilight continue hovering overhead and uh, firing down on us. The thing is, look, they made managed to do 22k damage and our three, uh, our three hero killers here were on able to reach them and do anything so yeah good move decent move interesting move if nothing else we're gonna heal up though unfortunately it's a very little healing hmm. all right well enslave as best we can they're going to back off and it looks like we'll have to go after them again if we can you're really gonna run away from the mountain like that are we even able to reach them now Oh, I'm going to be salty if we can't reach them. And they both go the same way. So I guess it'll be a repeat of the battle. Uh, at least we get casualty punishment rate and missile strength, but only from Malekith himself. We can't Druki first strike anymore, can we? Hmm. Armor of living death gained. Ward of the hunger. Ooh. Well, that's just lovely. Uh, Malekith, unfortunately, gets no use out of it because he has the armor of midnight, but that's still a very nice armor piece to pick up. Uh, he should probably get absolute power here. Yeah, we're gonna need it. I was gonna keep going through Infamous Raider, but if we have to fight those guys again, it's uh, certainly going to be a potential problem. Uh, I think for this battle, Hagren is going to switch out of the Forbidden Rod and into the Scroll of Black Horror. Mostly because uh, the yeah she, she she's damaged enough so that she can't use that ability again. Hmm. We're also not high enough tier level to uh, level up anybody else. I was just wondering whether we could grab anybody else to uh, help out with the uh, secondary attack. We should still be able to pull it off without uh, too many losses, but the lack of Druki first strike now is going to be certainly an issue. All right, this this became a lot more interesting than I was uh, originally expecting. And oh, it looks like this Glamour Weaver Toltiran will also be nearby to help out. Well, I guess there's nothing else we could do that I can think of that will power us up any further. A uh, glory to Malekith. We still have Toy with Prey up and running, and that's the best one by far for uh, our current time. Nothing else here will get buffed by... Well, nothing else in our army really will get buffed by any of this, so can't do any of that. Iron Fist would be helpful in getting us the targeting range, I guess, and the reinforcement time, to be fair. On the other hand, at 100 Witch King's Authority, I feel like maybe we're better off saving to confederate uh, probably Marathi next, just to prevent the war between these two. So in that light, I guess we'll attack as we are. No Armor of Midnight... You know what? Let's give the Armor of Midnight briefly to Kura. 
Ran, and just so, or Armor of Living Death, rather, not uh, <laughs> not Malik and Sewn Armor. That's not what I meant, guys. That's not what I meant, I swear. Uh, you're gonna get this to allow yourself to heal up a little bit. We'll then put the Glittering Scales on you. And honestly, Kuran is a legend, so he should have the... Uh, You'd have strong armor in the first place. Uh, we'll give you glittering scales. In fact, wait, Kuran, you currently have Head Reaper, so you're already very high damaging. Okay. Do we need anything else? You know what? Let's get a Feather Foe Torque up and... Uh, you have the Fireball, eh? I'm just looking at whatever else we can put on you guys for now, for this battle. Oh, we have a bunch of gray items that are kind of mad that we don't really need. Is there any hand weapon that would help you out in this? Uh, Wand of Jet would help, but we can't put it on ya. Uh, Pearl of Infinite Bleakness makes you immune to psychology, eh? Well, the Ring of Hotek is more valuable for now, but you, I think, can hold the Ring of Hotek then. Or not the Ring of Hotek, the, uh, uh, what was I saying? The thing that makes you immune to psychology. I forgot what it was called. In like five seconds. Pearl of Infinite Wisdom. Because you're already hurt. Now let's do that and then Malekith, you have that Tormentor Sword, which is good. And, but it's much easier to reposition Hagren to make use of the Tormentor Sword. And maybe give Malekith something that makes him hit harder. Maybe we should have actually given him the, uh, the Ogre Blade instead. You know what? Take off the Tormentor Sword. Uh, use the Ogre Blade. We'll put the Tormentor Sword on our Sorceress because of her flying capabilities. And, well... It's a waste of the magical attacks it gives, but it's still better on her than these two. And then you, I guess, can just have a Relic Sword. Or wait, you know what? The Relic Sword is probably going to be inferior to the uh, Gold Sigil Sword just by virtue of the uh, slight amount of melee attack and defense that it provides. I just want to minimize the casualties that we get here. And I guess we'll get the Feather Foe Torque, even though I don't think it'll be all that useful on you, but it's not like it's going to be super useful on you and... It's actually probably better on you, but you're not going to be fighting in the air anyway, so yeah, let's not risk that. Alright, I think that's it. That's all we can do, or at least that's all I'm willing to do because I'm too lazy to do anything else. Do we attack this army first or this army first? Uh, the army without the lord? Or the army that is actually a threat? Probably the army that's actually a threat. We want to try to see them off screen or off the map before they uh, can do too much damage. Alright, attack. And here comes them, fight number two, Pyrrhic victory this time, and that looks okay. We still have a lot of enemies to contend with, uh, but uh, let's hope we can pull it off a second time. Here we go. Misery for all, that's what we like to hear up in here. This is, uh, this is going to be fun. And somebody is most definitely going to be miserable. Ooh, wow, this, uh, this map looks neat. Oh, actually, I want to see, wait, would this one be better with HDRR on or off? Oh, so the HDR, yeah, the HDR makes it more dark, but at the same time it makes all the colors pop more. And yes, I'm going to keep checking this. Uh... I think this one I like with HDR on, because it's not ultra bright, but I don't know. <laughs> you guys let me know, I'm still I'm still checking out the, uh, uh, ooh, moon, in, uh, in water. I'm still checking out the graphics or uh, trying them out. Anyway, here we go, round two, the Sisters of Twilight remain at full HP, but the rest of their army is hurt, but so is ours. We pray to Cain and to Aerith Kiel, and they, I guess, pray to Drake. uh, wait. No, they pray to, uh... Anathrema, yeah, okay, wait, I just realized something. I confused Anathrema earlier, I was talking about this, uh, during another lore rant. Uh, I confused Anathrema, the goddess of the savage hunt, with Drakira. Drakira is the goddess of vengeance, who the Dark Elves, to a degree, pray to. And uh, the point I was making still stands, just assume that I meant Drakira earlier, rather than Anathrema. Uh, what I was talking about was Anathrema, or... I was to talk about was that Drakira is surprisingly not as popular with the Dark Elves as Aerith Kial is. Aerith Kial is extremely popular with the Dark Elves, probably uh, second after Kane. 
And the reason I was surprised was because vengeance, you know, Drakira is all about vengeance being the goddess of vengeance, and the Dark Elves like themselves some vengeance. And, but yeah, not so much uh, Anathorema, though I'm sure there are adherents of Anathorema among the Dark Elves as well, who are obviously not as popular as the Wood Elves who love the goddess of the Savage Hunt. Anyway, uh, distracting. Here we go. The Eagles have dropped into our back line, but this is why we kept our Black Guard of Nagarond in reserve this time around. Yes, the Eagles may get a few of our Dark Shards, but once they're surrounded by the Black Guard, the Black Guard will take care of them. We're still going to have to be ignoring the enemy Sisters of Twilight, but uh, I Otherwise, we'll be uh, meeting the enemy Dryads in the water down here, while we have taken a fairly nice position up here with our Hurt units of Dread Spears and our Raven Heralds and uh, other and Dark Riders and Chariots, who will hopefully use the Elevation Advantage to uh, uh, quarrel down the enemy Glade Guard. Just like last battle, Malekith and the Masters are, are running around in the enemy back line, essentially ignoring the melee units in favor of keeping the range units from firing while our own range units hopefully can kill off their range units. It, uh, it worked reasonably well last time and hopefully we can get a repeat. The second enemy army has moved onto the field once again and that's a lot of uh, range units that are back and once again those darn annoying glade riders that are going to be such an issue to deal with. Fortunately, it looks like our front line is this time at least superior. The Black Guard have surrounded finally the Eagles, and I think they may have dropped one, or maybe not. Uh, but uh, at the very least, our Dark Shards have been doing a good job against the enemy Glade Guard, and the Dryads have lost to the Dread Spears, both of them in fact. So we should now be able to focus down those range units fairly well. Alrighty, and the Eagles are wavering. The Black Guard nearly had them, applying those anti large halberds to great effect and hopefully we can take them off the field this time if they rout or shatter well, as long as they run off the screen they will not return because the army will be destroyed this time. There we go. Looks like they're shattered or at the very least routing and the end of the... Uh, and the edge of the map is fairly close. Ooh, that uh, that flamestorm looks fantastic in the water and with HDR, I gotta say. And it is doing decent amounts of damage, but really the enemy has done a fairly good job at not blobbing up too much this time. It was summoned in a spot where the enemy had been blobbing, but it moved the relatively quick Glade Riders away. It looks like we have also found the Glamour Weaver, who was a reinforcing army, the third army here, but Malekith has managed to catch with the uh, Tormentor sword applied by our own sorceress and hopefully together with the uh, masters we can bring this lord down and get another little bit of a uh, another little bit of a morale boost or debuff for the end man ooh yeah the the HDR makes the effects on the dark map look fantastic everything's so bright and uh, and punchy with the colors anyway Toltiran goes down and that's one of the lords down the master and Malekith now head towards the enemy army where Malekith has summoned another blade wind among those glade riders who just won't go down and just trying to get vortexes in their faces so that they uh, so that they take sufficient damage and it's sort of working otherwise uh, we have been doing a fairly decent job up here. Our hurt units of Dread Spears are distracting enemy Dryads, while another unit of Dread Spears heads towards the enemy Glade Captain here, but uh, unlike last battle, our Dark Riders, our Cold One Chariots, and our Raven Heralds are all pretty okay, and can thus contend with the enemy Glade Guard, as well as their other range units. And there we go, and it looks like we are marching forward. Our forces advance from both directions at once, and it looks like the battle is going out our way this time, much more convincingly than last battle, perhaps. Glade Riders are sort of forced to uh, move forward as the uh, as the enemy melee line collapses, and with only ranged units remaining, the advantage, the advantage should be ours as we can just rush towards them. Too bad we don't have something like uh, Black Arc Corsairs with hand bows. They would be pretty perfect for this, because they can fight in melee, but it can also shoot while they chase enemies down. Our chariots, Malekith and the Master are all rushing around in the background. Honestly, I think in terms of lighting, this has been my favorite battle so far. Also, did it get lighter while the battle was going on? Like, did the sun start coming up? I don't know. But is it me, or does this battle look fantastic? I love it. 
Well, keep firing with the balance of power is definitely in our favor now, and most of the enemy melee line is gone. Most of the enemy range line is pretty much gone, too. We're chasing down that uh, Glade Captain from that second army now, but now it's just a matter of uh, keeping all those enemies engaged. They will lose as long as they're engaged, and it looks like our Dark Shards no longer need to fire at enemy range. Units can thus all start focusing down those Sisters of Twilight. That uh, dragon can certainly take a heck of a beat as it's got a ton of HP and probably a ton of resistances as well. 44 ward save and 16 physical resistance. Wait, what's the ward save from? Is it an ability? How do they have 44 ward save at level, uh, whatever level the 16? That's insane. Damn. Well, uh, great for them, but uh, it looks like that is not going to be sufficient, as since the rest of their army is dead, they are going to take the shots from every single range unit we have, and that will force them out. I don't believe anybody in the air is capable of actually bringing them down that we have, and the dragon is fast enough to actually book it on out of here, um, but... And the battle is still ours. I didn't get a lot of good shots of the uh, Sisters of Twilight fighting, unfortunately, but uh, frankly, we were busy, so let's just enjoy the uh, last few shots of them running away while the dragon is uh, hit with uh, hundreds of quarrels, though obviously that's not going to be enough to bring it down. Still... There we go. Alrighty, and we don't need to chase anybody off with the exception of the Third Army, I believe. The only problem is I don't know which units belong to the Third Army. Which was not fought in the first battle and thus will probably survive. But either way, this one I think, close victory, yes, but not a Pyrrhic unlike last one. And much more convincingly in our favor than the last as well. Let's, uh, let's praise Drakira this time, I guess, for my confusing her and uh, Anathorema. Ooh, another battle we certainly had to work for, and apparently we're not stealing items from these guys because uh, we haven't stolen anything from the Sisters of Twilight, damn. Um, but what we have managed to do is bring them down. I see. Well, these two armies will be destroyed. I don't know about Glamour Weaver told Tyran. We would like the money, but we're going to enslave because we need to heal up here, as we don't have much of a choice in the matter. And yes, in fact, Dodan is one unit that will back off, but uh, at the end of the day, not a big deal. And, hey, we actually did get ourselves a giant blade, a dark pegasus for Foros, and hmm, now I'm thinking... If we fight the Sisters of Twilight again, and I should have thought of this before uh, and before doing the battle, I should put both of the uh, uh, both of these guys off of the Cold Ones and onto the Dark Pegasi. Yes, it will make them weaker as fighters, but at least they'll be able to reach into the sky to uh, knock down those sisters. Malkin is one level away from his dragon as well, which is swell, uh, but he can do nothing further this turn. Uh, that uh, those battles also took a fair bit of time, and I think this is probably the place to call it. I'm not going to do another round of long admin uh, right now, so I'm calling the episode here. Next time, since the armies of the uh, of the Heralds of Ariel have been destroyed, we advance southward towards Hag Hall. We're just going to leave Dodan alone and try to take their territories. In the meantime, we will continue building up Admiral Yorn's uh, uh, actual fleet, and then hopefully sent him after Silostra here. I'm kind of tempted to actually transfer some of the uh, Dark Shards off of Morancy to him, and just so that he has a little bit more in the way of range than just Black Arc Corsairs. Yeah, the handles are fantastic, uh, but uh, they will probably want to at least be able to... Uh, join melee by hitting the enemy in the back. I'll think about it. Either way, we really need to catch Silostra, and also I was fully expecting Crone Helebron to take this episode as she joins the war against Chaos, but I guess it'll have to wait until next time. So, stay tuned for more Malekith. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments, especially to Threshold. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.